Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at exactly how you can figure out if your brushless motor is dead or not. Is it time to replace that brushless motor because you may have cooked something? This is the video to watch to figure out exactly how that is possible. Now here we have a brushless motor inside of an electric ducted fan jet unit. This brushless motor was in a jet and I do have an issue with the power system. Now one of the things that I was able to do is isolate the brushless motor as not being a problem and this is how I ended up doing it. Now fortunately enough for me I didn't need to go and take that motor outside of the ducted fan housing. I could connect up the tools necessary to measure everything that I needed to get. Now for some of you you may have to take that motor right out of your system so that you're able to hold it and have access to the shaft of the motor as well as all the electrical leads that come out of it. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to break it up into two different sections. We're going to have our first section being the mechanical aspect of our motor. Then we're going to go and talk about the electrical aspect of the motor and make sure that both of them are okay. Typically what you want to do is investigate if the motor is an issue, if you have some problem that is going on within your power system. If you're able to identify that the motor is in good working order or condition then you can move on to test other components such as the electronic speed control maybe even the battery pack that you're using as well as even the radio system that communicates with your electronic speed control these are all the different components that could potentially create an issue within your power system let's go ahead and start off by talking about mechanically what you can do now the first thing that you want to do is go ahead grab your brushless motor and you want to be able to Take a look at it to make sure there's nothing that you're able to see that is quite obvious. Usually this would come right away if there is a problem. Now if your motor has an opening vents on it, not all motors do, you can easily make an inspection within them. This motor has a big shield that is resting right in the front so I can't see any further in the motor. That's okay because the big primary test of the motor mechanically is going to be rotating the shaft on the output side. The next thing to do is simply rotate the motor shaft in order to determine if there is any sort of binding that is occurring within your motor. Now what you'll want to do is slowly rotate it. Things to keep in mind is you may feel some bumps as you go ahead and rotate the shaft of the motor. These bumps is known as the cogging effect. Cogging is when you have the magnet inside of your motor interacting with the iron core that's found inside your motor as well. That's right on the stator. This is normal if you feel these steps or bumps. What you want to listen for is any sort of grinding or rubbing that sounds bad. You will know if there's an issue. You also want to be able to take that motor shaft and press it in, pull it out to see if you have any excessive amounts of play. And the last thing that you want to do is you also want to move it up and down as you see it here. Then you rotate the motor 90 degrees and do the same thing. If you do not feel anything from all those tests, chances are mechanically this motor is okay. What you'll want to do next is move on to the electrical aspect of the test for this brushless motor. Now in order to test the motor electrically, you will need a couple tools. What you will need is a multimeter that is capable of measuring both frequency in hertz as well as your AC voltage that comes from your motor. If you have a multimeter that can do that, then you're in luck. The second tool that you're going to need is some sort of drill. Now what I do recommend is a drill that has a lithium ion battery. Now the reason why I prefer to use, you don't need to, a drill that has a lithium ion battery pack is I know that the RPM of the drill is going to be quite consistent if I go and spin it up now and in the next minute. A nickel metal hydride battery or nickel cadmium battery is not going to have those same properties and may make this test a little more difficult and not as repeatable. Now what you'll want to do is hook up your motor so that you can measure the voltage in each one of the phases. For this it's quite simple. All you're going to do is take the leads of your brushless motor and connect them one to the red. We have three wires out of this motor. We have red going to red and then we're going to take our negative on the multimeter and we're going to connect it to the blue. So I'm covering one of the three phases in this motor. Next thing is you're going to go and mount the drill onto the shaft of the motor and then spin it up and on your multimeter you're going to measure the frequency. I'm going to throw in a short clip here so you can see exactly how this is done in a little bit more detail. And if you want even more detail than that you can go ahead and watch the full video in the link that I leave in the description area of this video. So then the next thing to do is we want to measure the RPM. In this case it's going to be frequency. We have to calculate RPM. 
So the frequency that we're going to be measuring is going to be recorded right here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to spin the drill up to speed. And then as we do this, we want to wait till the, the result ends up stabilizing. And then we select the number that it averages out to. So I'm going to go ahead and spin it up wide open. So once I've hit maximum speed, you should have a reading that you see. And that reading now can be used to calculate the RPM that we were spinning. The frequency that we measured, it was pretty stable around 42.19. We can go ahead and enter that in. And then the motor pulls. So I know Leopard Motors, you can hop onto their specification website and get the correct value there. The motor pulls that exist in the Leopard Hobby motor is four. So we can go ahead and enter that in. So then when we hit the calculate button, it spits out 1266 so this is the rpm that that drill was spinning when it was rotating the brushless motor assembly you could see that more in detail in the video linked below the next thing that you're going to want to do is switch over from your frequency selection so this in my case would be over here i'm going to go and switch over to the ac section now and i want to measure all three phases of my motor now i connect this motor so far to the blue and the red wire I have covered one of the three phases. I'm going to switch these around so that I'm able to get the blue and the yellow, the blue and the red, and the red and the yellow. Those are the three combinations. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go and measure the voltage that I'm getting in those three phases. I set my multimeter to the voltage AC already. All I need to do is spin up my motor, record the voltage, switch the wires, and repeat two more times after I've switched the leads around. Now let's go ahead and select the AC voltage select our dial over to ACV and then we're going to repeat the exact same thing we're going to spin the motor up again so this now produces a result for us that we can measure so there we have it our voltage that we ended up measuring it was pretty stable around 0.855 I know it wasn't perfectly clear in the video however it is 0.855 that's the measured voltage that we that we got so of course now when we hit the calculate button, it spits out the amount of RPM per volt. Now on this specific motor, I ended up measuring the voltage on all three phases of the motor and I got 0.733 volts each and every time. This tells me that there's obviously consistency between the windings, but it also tells me that there is no sort of short in any one of the phases. That is a good indication, but it doesn't tell you everything yet. The other thing that I have to do is plug all of those voltages as well as the motor RPM right into the online calculator to determine the KV value of your motor. Once all that stuff is entered in the calculator, you can submit it and then determine how much KV your motor has. What you want to be able to do is compare that KV value up against the motor that you're holding. Look at the spec sheet and understand what kind of KV the motor that you're testing has, and you want to be able to get something that is relatively close. Now, this specific motor has a KV of 1350, and I ended up getting somewhere around 1385 as an actual result. There's always going to be a tolerance associated with the manufacturer's process and how they're determining the KV of this motor. What I would what would alarm me is if I ended up getting a value of 1600 when I'm holding a motor that says 1350. That's quite a bit out. Now what's critical about the KV calculation is that is also testing the strength of the magnet inside of your motor. You can have a motor that has an issue if you ended up overheating it, but it's not very obvious electrically. What you want to do is compare that KV value. If that magnet within your motor had suffered any permanent damage because it was overheated, that KV value would actually go up. It would increase, meaning you lost the strength of those magnets, causing the motor to not have the same KV value. That would be a sign and indication of a potential problem, and you'll want to do something about that. Either find a way to replace the rotor and the magnets that are inside your motor, or just simply replace the entire motor itself. Now, I hope that helps answer your guys' questions on how you can determine whether or not your brushless motor has failed, either mechanically or electrically. You guys know the drill. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, and I'll see you next Monday.